and we did it. So it's been six days since we first put up the corner of our two wall sections and it's been mentally excruciating and physically exhausting. Um, as we mentioned in the last video, we have everything planned on paper before we came out here, but a lot of times we know that, you know, you have something in your head when you actually put it down on the ground, things can be very different and there may be things that are overlooked that we missed or something, but thankfully it all went according to plan and we now have four walls. So, since we have a very small crew on site for the framing part, um, as we mentioned, we are using a somewhat unconventional method of putting up these walls. What we did was that we took our framing plan, we laid all our 2x8 studs on the ground first, and we sheathed them partially before we used the excavator to lift them up over to our anchor bolt, and then we set them down um, for each of the wall sections. So when the wall sections are down, the first thing we did was we actually went around and put down the top plate to tie the wall sections together and somewhat stabilize them. And then what we did was that we actually put up bracing um, against them just in case we have some freak wind coming through and blow off our walls. And the last thing we did was then we actually tightened down all the bolts to our foundation to make sure that the walls aren't going anywhere. So all that went pretty well, but as you can see behind me, things are looking a little bit odd. We have these openings where we have studs running through them. Now all this is actually by design because we had initially anticipated that our trusses would arrive this week. So we wanted to focus all our time and effort to put up all the structural part um, that is supporting the roof trusses. So we have our um, exterior walls up, as well as all our beams um, in place so that if there's trusses had arrived we could have just set them right away. Um, that didn't happen so for the next couple of days we're going to move on to a different task. So now we're standing closer to the house we'll take you to see some of the framing details with us. First thing first on this eastern wall we have a lot of big openings that we are using a single 4x12 header to support all the roof load. So if you come closer, this one is our biggest opening in the kitchen. It spans almost 90 inch wide and we will have kitchen cabinets down below and a huge window on top. Now some of the atypical framing details that we introduced here can be seen up here with me. So here we have two king studs and two jack that, that are normally cut just below the header to support the header itself. Now instead of cutting it all the way, we decide to notch it to support our single 4x12 header up there. The reason why we decided to do this instead of, you know, the most framing technique which you have the header somehow spanning both the outside and the inside is because we wanted to reserve a pocket between the interior wall to this header to recess a roller blind in there for when we need some shades on the eastern wall. So this is a special details we did. By notching the jacks that will have actually a nice sur surface to finish our wall to to create a finished pocket between the header and the interior wall itself. So the next thing to look at is actually this corner framing detail here. Because we are sort of pushing the boundary of how big of an opening that we're pushing towards the wall corners, our architect specified that we needed to have the continuous portal framing for this particular corner here. So what's special about this is that instead of just having the header spanning the opening itself, the header actually goes all the way to the corner and is supported by the small section of the wall. So. Similar to the other wall, we notch our jack stud here to support the beam itself and then we'll come in and fill in the top and add in the metal strap per code um, to finish the interior side of the portal framing. Now if you come around, let's go take a look at the nailing pattern for the portal framing. So over here you can see that our sheathing is very securely fastened to the wall itself with a 3 inch OC nailing pattern here. 
So we had to do this for both sides of the portal frame as well as a three inch OC nailing pattern to the beam itself to make sure that everything is secure and that this little corner will provide the entire house the proper shearing value that it needs. So that's it for this update. The next thing we're going to do is that we're going to go around the house, finish all the cripple walls that we still have to fill in, and also finish all the sheathing, do all our rough opening cutout. So the next time you see us, our house will look even more like a house.